Hello, this is Caleb Barney with Russell Real Estate, and today I wanted to go over a study that was published recently by a couple of students. I'm assuming they're grad students, uh, and then this is just the paper that they were writing. But um, I had heard a couple of people reference this and thought it was interesting. So I, I looked it up, and immediately I got frustrated with it, uh, and I'm going to go over why. Uh, but with the reasons that I'll point out as far as why I think they're wrong, that they have found evidence that real estate agents representing buyers are steering people, steering their own clients away from buying houses that offer low commission rates. Um, I'm going to use data or I'm going to use my MLS and my CRM to prove that I can't do what they think they're they're proving. Uh, and then I'll also give a couple of reasons why I think they're incorrect and give my own theory for why, you know, lower commission uh, offerings for houses are actually selling slower um, and getting fewer page views. So the title of their paper is Et to Agent Commission-Based Steering in Residential Real Estate. The abstract states... Real estate agents are required to serve their clients' best interests. However, policymakers have long suspected that buyer agents steer their clients away from properties that offer low buyer agent commissions. They are particularly concerned that steering is a key reason why agent commissions have remained high in the internet era, even as commissions in other industries have plummeted. Analyzing a new data set, we provide the first systematic nationwide evidence that buyer agents do in fact steer clients away from properties that offer low buyer agent commissions. It goes on to say, buyer agents play an important role in helping their clients find homes. We hypothesize that buyer agents may skip over low commission homes in favor of high commission homes when choosing which listings to forward to their clients. If so, low commission listings would tend to uh, to garner fewer page views on public real estate portals like Zillow and Redfin. To test this theory, we track the number of page views that individual listings receive on Redfin. All else being equal, we find that low commission listings receive fewer page views. This effect is most pronounced for listings with the lowest commissions, but even listings with commissions that are slightly below the going rate receive significantly fewer page views. We also find evidence that this steering has meaningful economic consequences. Homes with lower buyer agent commissions take longer to sell and are less likely to sell at all. Again, these effects are largest for the listings with the lowest commissions, which take 33% longer to sell nationwide. In a typical geographic market, our best estimate is that these lowest commission properties face a 75% greater risk of not selling at all. Here too, even commissions that are slightly below the going rate are associated with longer sale times and higher risk of a failed sale. So, <clears throat> excuse me as I clear my throat there. Uh, before I go into why that's not possible, um, or I shouldn't say it's not possible, but why it's unlikely, um, I want to break down each section here. Um, the first being, you know, okay, real estate agents are required to serve their clients' best interests. That is true. We are uh, acting as a fiduciary, or we have a fiduciary duty to our clients. So that means we have to do uh, whatever uh, is in the best interest of the clients as long as it is, you know, legal, moral, ethical, everything like that. <clears throat> um, as far as, you know, why agent commissions have remained high in the internet era, Yes, there's a ton of information out there online. Um, I think that some people can be skeptical of information that's online. And honestly, the reason why I think agent commissions have remained high in the internet era is because a lot of people have found having a good buyer's agent is worth it. Um, otherwise, they wouldn't use them. They would just go straight to the listing agent. They would say, hey, Listing agent, you can take both sides of the commission, um, and I don't need a buyer's agent to represent me. But that's not the case. Um, last year, in 2022, I read something where that was the highest 
percentage of buyers had ever used buyer's agents in 2022. And it's because they need somebody to lean on, especially in these changing times with a, an odd market. They see the value in having an agent who can run appropriate comparables. So that way they can make offers that are strong, but not too strong. They don't want to be overpaying for a property, but they do want that property. So it has to be, you can't lowball somebody, otherwise you're never going to get an offer accepted in a hot seller's market. But at the same time, you don't want to pay $20,000 more than the next person. Uh, they also rely on agents for uh, references for you know, insurance sometimes, for home inspectors, of course, for so many different other things for negotiating. And that's why even though there is a lot of information out there, if you are going to buy uh, or make the largest transaction of your life, say you're buying a $300,000 house, a $500,000 house, whatever it is, don't you want somebody on your side that has been doing, you know, 30 transactions a year uh, representing you as opposed to maybe you're a first time home buyer, this is your first time ever, or maybe this is the first time you're buying a home in 10 years. Um, you know, there's there's a reason why agents are very necessary, even with a lot of information being out there in the internet. So uh, they go on to say that, you know, they're providing systematic nationwide evidence. Uh, their evidence is it would not hold up in the court of law, in my opinion. So uh, <clears throat> they go on to say, they hypothesize, so again, Keep in mind, this is an opinion, even though they do say evidence, uh, use that word lightly because they are giving their opinion of why um, they, they feel buyer's agents may skip over low commission homes in favor of high commission homes. So one reason why I don't do this, and this is something to, uh, to just point out, if, you don't, if you're looking to buy or sell real estate and you don't trust your agent, you need to run away from that agent anyways. Um, ideally, you know, like, and trust that agent. And the reason why I don't ever gripe about showing a house that has a that's offering a lower commission to the buyer's agent is because I know that doing what's best for my client is not only the right thing to do. If if you're, you know, it, as they are claiming. That agents are, you know, basically sleazy. They're only in it for the money. Well, the dumb agents are uh, if they're doing that. But if you're smart, you realize the value of your client and doing the right thing for your client because it's not just a one-time transaction. If you truly are acting as a fiduciary for them and you're acting in their best interests, guess what? They're going to use you again. They're going to refer you to other clients or to other, you know, potential clients for you. And that one client, say I made, you know, $10,000 on a commission one time, but I screwed that client over. They hate me. They leave me a terrible Google review. Um, you know, bad news spreads quickly and it's tough to get off. Uh, you know, that's cool. I got $10,000 one time, but if they go on to use me again in the future. And, you know, you know, real estate in general, prices typically go up. So if they're selling their house and buying another one, if they are uh, referring their friends and family members to me, this could, this one client that I'm treating well, and that I'm serving in their best interests could be worth, you know, 10 times the amount of me making one sale on them. So that's why, you know, as an agent, you need to have somebody that's trustworthy, but also they need to be thinking in the long term too. What's best for my business? It's what's best for my business is doing what's right for the clients. But um, but what they end up saying or hypothesizing is that low commissions would uh, tend to garner fewer page views on public real estate portals like Zillow and Redfin. Um, so that right there was the biggest red flag as I was reading it. I was like, oh my gosh, these people probably have no idea how real estate agents work. But I have, you know, I, I've sent people stuff on Zillow if I know they like Zillow occasionally. That's very rare. Um, 
I don't know if I've ever sent a client a house on Redfin. And the reason why is because you have, as an agent, you know, sometimes hundreds of people that are looking to buy at any given time. And of course, they're not all ready to buy right now, but they've expressed interest in buying within, you know, the immediate future, within the next three to six months, within the next year or longer. And I can't go on, you know, my MLS every single day and then text everybody every single house that might work for them. That's just not feasible if you want to make it long term in the business. Um, Yes, I do text my clients to stay in touch with them, but I set them up on automatic email searches. And then if there is something, I, I do CC myself on those. If there is something, then I'll reach out to them and say, hey, did you see that listing? Um, but if I send them stuff 99% of the time, if I'm texting, it's through realtor.com. Uh, I have been a fan of HomeSnap, which, uh, was recently bought out and has merged with homes.com, but I don't send them stuff from Zillow or Redfin and neither do most agents. Uh, so if they're, you know, if Jordan, Will, and John are basing their evidence on, page views from Zillow and Redfin, like this is a very weak argument uh, because no agents are sending them that. So if that is true, that means that agents are not steering their clients away from those houses. Those clients just aren't looking at it. So the reason, the next thing that we have to ask then is why aren't they looking at it? So basically with low commissions, uh, there's a few different ways to go about this. Um, the first one I'll say is for the, uh, for the seller who thinks maybe they're savvy, they're trying to save a few bucks, uh, and they're going to do everything themselves. There are, uh, brokerages, discount brokerages that will allow you to pay them a flat fee and list your home in the MLS. You are in charge of putting the sign on the yard, dealing with showings, uh, taking pictures, coming up with any sort of marketing, advertising, negotiating. All of that is on you as the seller if you go that route. And a lot of times when they go that route, obviously they're cost conscious uh, because they don't want to pay a listing agent. A lot of times they'll actually pay or offer a lower commission to a buyer's agent as well. And the reason why buyer's agents aren't steering people away. And the reason why I'm arguing that there are just fewer page views on websites like Redfin is because a lot of the times those, uh, those sellers, they don't have the contacts that a real estate professional does for a real estate, uh, professional real estate photographer, for example, or they don't even think about it. They say, Oh, I have, you know, a nice iPhone, I can take this photo. Um, And they don't know about staging um, prior to photos. They don't know about lighting. They're using, again, their iPhone photo as opposed to a professional grade lens, you know, wide angle lens. They don't have the best editing material uh, where basically you can use white balance, you could use contrast, where you could add a different sky. Um, because again, I, I live in the Cleveland, Ohio area and it's, you know, we, we have a lot of gray days here, but what's going to sell better if it's on a magazine article, a house with a gray gloomy sky or a house with a blue sky, you're not doing anything to mislead people about the house. Maybe you're changing the sky, but that's basically it. It's to draw people in Because if that first picture is really attractive, then people will start clicking on, you know, on that website to actually look at that house. So, um, so that's the first one. The second one is say they do go with a listing agent and they, uh, they've negotiated with that you know, discount agent where instead of saying, hey, we're, we're going to, my normal rate's at 6%, but, um, you know, we could go at 5% or 4% for you for whatever reason. Well, 
uh, the way that real estate has been performed for the past couple hundred years, it predates any, uh, it predates the NAR, which is National Association of Realtors. Uh, I believe that I heard recently that, you know, they were doing this back in the 1800s where whoever's representing the seller is basically offering a buyer's agent commission as well. And basically if, if you're going from 6% to 4%, obviously you can't still offer the same commission to a buyer's agent because realistically speaking, that money's coming out of your pocket and you're already paying more, you know, if they're doing a good job, but, uh, you know, they they have to cut costs somewhere. Um, and a professional photographer, they don't care what your commission is. They're they're charging their rate. And if you cut your commission, that's fine. But they're charging their rate. So where do these discount uh, brokers often skimp out on? They don't pay for a professional photographer. And they take their iPhone photos or whatever phone photos that they have. They don't pay for advertising. Um, you know, I myself, I pay for a professional photographer. We do drone photos. Um, they do beautiful photos inside and out. I pay for advertising for the house. Um, you know, I market the house aggressively and all of that costs money. And, you know, when I'm advertising, when I'm uh, retargeting people who have expressed interest in buying real estate in a specific area, uh, you know, that's money that I'm able to spend up front that that's out of my own pocket with the understanding that, Hey, you know, I'm going to sell the house quicker and for more money. Um, and you know, I, I am getting my commission on the back end, obviously once the property actually sells, but by spending money on the best photography on the best advertising and best marketing strategy, guess what? We're going to get more page views. But if you're going to a discount broker that's offering lower commissions to the buy side, then the page views are probably going to be lower if you don't have as good of photos to entice people. If you're not actively seeking out and trying to grab people from the internet and saying, hey, you, hey, you, you already expressed interest in buying in this area. Why don't you look at this house? Um, that's all stuff that a good listing agent is going to do that will help drive up those page views. So again, their theory that they tested by tracking the number of page views from listings on Redfin, this, it, it doesn't jive with what I'm, with what I'm seeing here. Um, and then as far as, yes, it's going to take longer to sell. Well, of course it's going to take longer to sell. You didn't market it correctly. It's not because of the commissions that you're offering. It's because it's not getting in front of enough eyeballs. Basically, there's not enough viewers seeing it. So, and it's not because uh, of the low commissions, it's because of the crappy marketing. So next, I want to actually go over, now that I've gone over their article and said, this is hogwash basically, next I want to go over what I can do to set up people to receive listings, email listings, every single day in their inbox of what they're looking for. So uh, we'll go through... <clears throat> we'll say, okay, we're looking for, you know, I went to the residential search. We're only looking for actively for sale properties. Nothing that's contingent, pending, expired, sold, uh, you know, withdrawn or temporarily off the market. So single family only. Um, I'm not going to sort through, but you can sort through style. So if you want ranch, colonial, Cape Cod, bungalow, all that stuff. Uh, I'm not going to sort through HOA fees or maintenance fees, or if it's a short sale or even a fixer upper right now. Um, I could do a map search from my location. I can actually draw out areas that I would want, uh, like that they've expressed, say they want to only be in certain high schools or whatever, I could draw those out. I could do by county. In this case, let's just say anything in Strongsville. So if I'm doing anything in Strongsville, It'll automatically pull from Cuyahoga County. I don't have to uh, put that field in. Same thing for school district. I don't have to put Strongsville here. Strongsville has two zip codes. I don't have to put those here because anything that, as long as it was entered into the MLS correctly, uh, I don't have to worry about. 
and I'm not going to worry about a particular subdivision yet. Uh, my MLS, MLS Now, covers a lot of Ohio. Ironically, it doesn't cover all of Ohio, uh, parts of Pennsylvania, and parts of West Virginia. So that's the search areas I could look for. Let's say that we're looking for, oh, by the way, then it'll tell us how many, uh, how many houses hit uh, or match that criteria as of right now with just single family uh, houses in Strongsville that are actively for sale, there's 38. So let's say we want it to be 500,000 or less. So now there's 32. Let's say three bedrooms or more. I don't care necessarily for um, you know a bedroom on the main floor or anything at this time. Let's say three bathrooms or more total, uh, including two full bathrooms or more. So now we're down to 15 matches. Let's say it's going to be 2,000 plus square feet. We want a basement. We want at least one fireplace, at least a two car garage. So now we're down to 12. And then let's say we want it to be from 2010 on. So relatively new. All right, three matches. All right, so this you've gotten to see every field that I've shown so far as far as how I can search. Next, we have more details about the house itself. So I'm scrolling all the way down just so you could see that's everything that I can search for. Next is details about the house. I'm not going to do anything for any of these other than go over it with you, but we could say that we want a finished basement, um, you know, unfinished, crawl space, full basement, uh, so on and so forth. We could say, hey, it has to have central air. It has to have gas for the heating fuel. Um, you know, heating type, you know, we don't want baseboard, we want it to be forced air, like a furnace. The exterior, the exterior features, uh, so that's exterior material of what the house is made of, exterior features such as like an in-ground pool, any garage features, if we want public water, public sewer, any amenities, this is more common for, uh, for things that have HOAs. Uh, our properties that have HOAs, the lot description, if we want it to be beachfront, you know, water, uh, anything like that. Uh, if it's owned by an agent, owned by the bank, if it's part of an estate, uh, so on and so forth. And then if there's restrictions, same thing, this is more so for uh, properties with HOAs. I could go room info and on what floor uh, it's on. And then I could actually search for, you know, specific items like in-law suite. Um, so, and then if I really wanted to just look for an agent's listings, I could always put their agent ID here. But that's everything. Uh, I could also search for available financing, but that's everything. One thing that you're probably not aware of, but I cannot actually search based on commission being offered to myself. So... I'm not actively searching and saying, okay, well, what's my commission going to be before I send this out to anybody? I literally just showed you everything that I could do. And all I would have to do to set up an email is do a new saved search or a new auto email. And then I would type in the person's name or their uh, email address and we'd go from there. And it would email them every single day, regardless of the commission being offered, as long as it's in my MLS. So that's the first option. This is what I like to set people up on. The second one is actually my CRM, uh, which is through KV Core. It's provided by my broker. And I have my own website and my own IDX feed, which is an internet data exchange feed. That's actually a website um, similar. That, that's what you know, Realtor.com, Zillow, and uh, Redfin all are. They're IDX feeds where they are getting information posted from my MLS, and then they are putting it on their own website. But just to show you that I can't search for commissions on here either, because the, the pro to doing this, as opposed to sending people it directly from... Uh, from the MLS is if I already put their information in here, I could do a campaign, a drip campaign, where it's also going to be emailing you uh, information, just staying top of mind. But um, 
and then when you do click on something, it'll take you to my website. But when you go to search settings here, you'll see the you know search title alert that I can title it, um, the email subject line that I can change, how often you receive that email, provided that a property that meets your criteria uh, actually hits the market, the areas of the listing, so I could do city, county, or zip code, which listings to send. So here you could see, okay, it's just the types of properties that I could send. So we would just do single family. Again, we could do price range, the number of bedrooms, uh, full bathrooms, half bathrooms, square footage in the property, uh, in, in the house that is, acreage for the property, the year built, the amenities that come with the property. So if it has a pool, if there's a golf course, again, a lot of this, um, you know, some of it is regarding or related to HOAs, some of it is not. So waterfront, water view, stuff like that. Financial options. So if you're interested in a foreclosure or short sale, uh, if you don't want it to be distressed, but that's not a required field. So I don't like checking off more than I have to for this, um, just because it's pretty exact. Uh, structural options that you could see here. And then I can uh, actually look for rental properties here as well. So if I did rentals, you may want a furnished rental. You may want one that allows pets. But this is my only search criteria here too. Once again, there's nothing for me to sort based on commission rates. So that's, uh, that's basically what I'm getting at here is... I'm when I'm sending people properties, I try to keep them either on my website here or I send it to them directly from the MLS. I'm not sending them Zillow links or Redfin links. So uh, their theory, while it's, it's a, a good theory for those people who are not in the industry, to anybody who is a real estate agent, it makes zero cents. Um, so before this gets too much buzz, I just wanted to kind of nip this in the bud because like, I really just wish they would have talked to a real estate agent before posting this because it, it is incorrect in so many ways. And while there are always going to be some bad apples, I, I guarantee there are agents, there's buyer's agents that steer people away from a property because they're thinking so short-sighted and they're like, oh gosh, I don't want something that's going to pay, you know, a flat fee of a thousand dollars or whatever the case may be. I've gotten paid out on a new construction home for $500. Uh, I've gotten paid out on investment properties for, you know, $500 or, you know, a thousand dollars. And yeah, it kind of stinks to do that, but guess what? Those are lifelong clients, uh, especially the investors. You know, they always come back and, and use you for more. But it is what it is. You take the good with the bad. And if you're working with a dishonest and distrust or untrustworthy agent, then you need to get away from that agent. But uh, most agents are, you know, I don't want to say good in the fact that they're great agents necessarily. Um, but most are ethical enough to at least see that, um, you know, Hey, I'm not going to push somebody away, especially if it's the difference between, you know, a couple hundred dollars or, you know, whatnot. I would hope that those agents aren't so money hungry that they can't see past that. Uh, and that's the only other thing that I would point out to you if you are looking for a buyer's agent or a seller, uh, a listing agent, I should say, um, you know, you want them to be hungry and that they have excellent work ethic and they want to do a good job for you. Uh, but you don't want them to be hungry, literally like, holy cow, I need this paycheck or I'm not going to be able to pay my mortgage payment or I'm not going to be able to pay for dinner tonight or feed my family. So don't hire a desperate agent. And hopefully you'll, you know, be, be clear from somebody steering you in the wrong direction. This is Caleb Barney with Russell Real Estate and have a great day.